Hey guys, it's Maddie. Welcome to the channel. And this is, I believe, video number seven, unless I've lost count or horribly messed these up somewhere along the way, of my one week um, HRT anniversary Palooza thing celebration. Um, so uh, today I actually have a special video. I have Ash from the channel Closeted Monster, and most of you guys know Ash. Um, he's been a big part of the channel so far, been on all the live streams. And uh, I'd kind of like to, uh, well, first, do you want to start off by saying hi, Ash? Hi. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, I am a trans uh, guy. I've been on testosterone for three months. And I, me and Maddie were also each other's first collapse. So we've been YouTube buddies for a little bit now. Yeah, pretty much almost as long as I've been on YouTube. Um, yeah. Me and Ash have, uh, have been pretty close through our, uh, through our journey. So. so anyways, I'm really excited to have him here. And... Um, you know, one thing I've always noticed about um, Ash's channel, and I really love it and I love the videos, but one thing that occurred to me is that I know almost nothing about Ash. And uh, I'm sure if you guys watch his channel as well that uh, you probably feel the same way. Um, his content is amazing, but um, I kind of want to take the, uh, today's video an opportunity to, um, I guess, uh, sneak out some personal uh, details of Ash's life and more specifically his coming out story um, because that's been you know a big theme of, of my channel lately so I'd kind of like to uh, I don't know be able to ask some questions and kind of see where that goes if that's okay with you Ash that is okay yeah I initially made my channel to be like more dedicated to uh, any gender non-conforming or queer person less about my own channel so I usually don't talk about myself for long periods of time <laughs> <laughs> well no worries no worries so um, I guess let's start off with um, how did you come out who was the first person that you told and what was it like um, like what were you feeling what were you thinking those sorts of things um, the first person who I came out to uh, as trans was probably my best friend um, we had a, I had a really interesting thing about like where I had my like I don't want to call it a revelation, but like kind of a revelation because at the time uh, they were questioning their gender identity and uh, they wanted to change their name for like uh, tr just to try out a different name that wasn't feminine. And but they felt awkward about it because like it's hard to do that alone. So they wanted to, um, you know, to try that. And I wanted to help them. So I was like, OK, what if for a week you go by a masculine name to try that out because at the time they were thinking that they might be uh, a trans male and I was like I'll do it with you <laughs> just to make sure that you aren't uncomfortable or that you feel supported and that you aren't like alone trying this out a week later uh, they realized that they didn't really feel masculine and that week later I was like oh shit I'm masculine <laughs> so it was like a kind of weird introduction and we had a conversation about it I was like I think that this may be something that is very me. And so that was kind of the first, like, vague, uh, just kind of touching the surface of, like, my whole gender issue. But, like, that's basically how I began to realize it. And how long ago was this? Um, that was, oh, that was, like, oh, my, that must have been, like, I'm trying to think. Uh, two years ago, maybe, a little bit over that. It was a while ago. So then after you told, you know, you had this uh, interaction with your friend and you had like this revelation, so to speak, um, kind of what was your your process, um, I guess, leading up after that? Um, did you go tell other people right away? Did you keep it to yourself? Um, how soon did you, uh, did you tell your family members? Well, I kept it to myself for a long time, uh, but I worked at a um, LGBTQIA plus organization um, as a pansexual person, and we had a conversation where uh, a trans woman was brought in, and she was talking about gender, so that like every all the staff like they knew correct pronouns and how to have these discussions, and like I kind of for the first time ever was like I want to go on testosterone. And I brought this up to her after it, and she was like, well, that's a big decision. You know, you should obviously think about it, but, like, it's cool that you know what you want. And that was the first time that I really wanted, realized that I wanted to take action about it because she was talking about estrogen and how amazing she felt to be part of that. And I, it just it just sounded like something that I wanted to do. And, and then so um, tell me about, like, your family members because – 
Um, it, I know that you watch um, all, probably almost all my videos, and you know that I've had uh, quite a bad experience with my family. So I'm really curious to, uh, I guess, know how it went with your family. Who did you tell first, um, and what was their reaction? Um, the first person I told was my dad because he basically asked because he he just he didn't really understand trans people. Um, I was talking about how like there was like some sort of uh, like survey at that thing where they were asking your gender and your sexuality and stuff just to know what what kind of workers were working um and uh i when i said that you know i put my gender and all my information down he was like what gender did you put and i was like uh questioning and he was really confused about it at first and we but we never really brought it up again but technically he was the first person that i came out to and i was like yeah i kind of feel male um but so he already kind of suspected it i don't know i think that he a lot we had this issue with a lot of my family members where they thought things would they they thought the whole trans thing and they thought the whole me uh uh my sexuality was all one big phase so like when i explained it i think that he thought that maybe i was trying it out to like fit in with people but like being trans or being queer isn't something you do to fit in it's something you do to very much not fit in yeah you're not you're not going to win a lot of popularity contests by uh announcing to the world that you're trans that's for sure yeah so i don't think he really understood and then it was a really different difficult discussion um with him because he just uh, i yeah i don't really know how to describe it he just hadn't he wasn't very around very much many trans people and didn't know anything like that and his girlfriend at the time was kind of uh against that kind of thing and so it was difficult so i didn't really bring it up to anyone for a long time after that but then like once you finally i guess came out to the rest of your family so both your parents knew um mm -hmm. and you you wanted to start on tea and what were there you know was it an emotional um process for you coming out or were they pretty much I guess, more accepting or understanding at that time. Um, cause I know like when I came out to, uh, to my family, it was, um, you know, a lot of tears, a lot of anger. Um, and it still is a lot of anger. They, they still don't, um, acknowledge me. They're, they're ashamed of me and I'm not welcome around them anymore. So I've lost a lot of family in that sense. Um, did, was your experience kind of similar? Or, I mean, or was it not like that emotional ride, so to speak? It was a very interesting coming out thing. One thing to mention is the fact that my family is a split family, so my parents are divorced. So um, when I finally came out to my dad with testosterone, he was actually really on board with it. The first thing he did was take me suit shopping, which was amazing, and he bought me, like, a blazer and everything. And he actually did, like, a complete 360 from where he was, like, a year ago to where he is now. Um, when I came out to my mom, my mom was the first one who I was like, I want to get on testosterone. Like, I need to do this. Uh, to like make myself feel okay and um she when I first said that she was like I can't talk about this right now and she says in a couple days we'll discuss it again and so a couple days later she took me to dinner and I, I think it could have it couldn't have been more of like the stereotypical bad coming out that it was because it basically ended with her and me screaming at each other outside of the restaurant <laughs> after dinner it was horrible. I felt so bad for all the wait staff because they just looked so uncomfortable. Because um, the entire dinner was just super tense. First of all, off, um, I think it was really hard for her because she didn't understand the idea of the difference between gender expression and gender identity. Because I've always been one of those people who's been like, we should let women be masculine and we should let boys be feminine, and that gender identity and gender expression have absolutely nothing to do with each other. And that was really hard for her to grasp. But um, she uh, let me go on testosterone and she went to a therapist for a little bit to kind of get out some of her anger. Um, she did make some comments which were really hurtful, like that she didn't, I, she didn't understand they were hurtful. Like I had to explain the fact when she was like, she said to me, I didn't give birth to a son. I'm like, that's really horrible for me to hear. And that in her way, she didn't understand how that would be horrible when that was just like the way she saw me, I guess. So, sorry. Um, <laughs> it's all good. So, have you, in your whole coming out process, 
have you lost anyone yet who you were really close to or who really meant a lot to you? Um, ha- have you lost any of those relationships? Yeah, I think that there have been a couple teachers. And I think that was the hardest because I'm like a very, uh, I value education a lot. And uh, before I was moving uh, to Chicago, I was basically out as uh, a trans guy who was not on testosterone yet. And it was really difficult to see when I was leaving my hometown and the school that I loved with an amazing education and teachers to have these teachers basically think bad things about me after that. I think that was really difficult. And uh, my transition drove a wedge with a lot of my friends as well, Um, as well as my stepdad um, had a lot of issues with understanding that and actually had to move out for a while until he kind of accepted me because he no one really felt comfortable with him in the household with me because he didn't really understand what was not an okay thing to say versus an okay thing to say. So it was difficult for a while. But my siblings, because I have uh, four siblings, have all been very accepting of me, like ridiculously accepting, which has been amazing. Wow, that's really great. So you're you're very fortunate then, I would say, in your, um, your coming out process and journey. And where everything is. So so now that you're actually on T, so let's fast forward. So now that you've, you're on T, you've been on T for what, three months almost, you said? Yeah. So are they handling the changes well? Because I've always said there's a difference in knowing versus seeing. And um, and I, I realized that was a, a big you know part of it because I told people I was trans, like, okay, yeah, it's fine, whatever. You know, it doesn't affect me. But then the first time they saw me and that those changes started to become evident, their reactions and tones sort of changed and they were a little bit more towards the negative side. And so now that, you know, changes are starting to happen, um, your voice is so much deeper, um, are, how are they handling those things, your family? Um, my family has actually been really, most of my family has been really amazing, especially with the voice change. So I was so happy about it. My mom uh, in the car today was like, do you have a cold or is your voice dropping? And I was like, I, it's dropping. And she was like, sounds so good. But I just didn't want to like compliment you if it was a cold. Um, but, uh, it was, I think around, uh, the beginning of my, um, maybe I was a month and a half on tea or a month on tea. We, that was about when a couple of my family members really started having issues with it. Um, especially my stepdad, we had this like basically screaming match about, uh, how um, he believed that trans people didn't deserve rights or, like, that it didn't exist and that, you know, there were only two genders and that, like, there was this sometimes, you know, people were just confused and that was just horrible to hear because he had been very quiet the entire transition process. So he he usually wouldn't understand my pronouns and, like, things like that, but, like, we usually just like assumed that was a mistake and kind of let it fly. It was the first time that it would have been very outright transphobia. Oh, my voice cracked. Um, And uh, it uh, got a lot of that. And I had to leave the house for a little bit to just, until he sorted his things out. And he got an apartment for about a month until he kind of got to the point where he could accept me. But that was a really rough month as far as it, because it kind of, I, most of the people in the household were defending me, but it was just really hard to live in the same house as someone who didn't think I deserved rights. So. Well, I'm so sorry. It's all right. It's, it's sl- slowly solving itself. Plus, I believe that, like, if someone doesn't accept you, you know, then they shouldn't be in your life anyway, I guess. Yeah, it just, you know, you've had some, like, negative experiences for sure, but I think overall, um, your experience was mostly positive. And that actually makes me really, really happy because I've had the exact opposite experience, you know. There was nobody in my house and my family who was standing up for me. Um, It's been mostly all negative for my family members, like I said, to the point where they basically disowned me and I'm not welcome around them, um, you know, if if, if that's the case. And uh, so it makes me very, very happy and optimistic, I guess, for... Um, our future and our society as a whole that um, that somebody um, has you know a decent family and a good family who is willing to see past you know boy or girl or you know gay or straight it's you're just a person and you're the yeah. person that they've always loved and cared about regardless 
I think it's also, there's a lot of, it's interesting because I hear a lot of the, like, people saying, like, the issue isn't there, like, being gay or being straight or being trans isn't a big deal anymore, like, families accept it, and I, I hear that a lot, and I'm like, it really depends on how old, you know, your family is or how, where you are in the country, because I think if someone says that and they're in, like, a really liberal area, you say that to someone who's in a very conservative yeah, area. Yeah, people from California say that all the time, and they don't live yeah. in Texas like I do, and it is completely yeah. different. It's it's very interesting because moving from Seattle, which is like West Coast, there the sidewalk walks are literally pride flags. is very different from being in Chicago and having like so many hate crimes against queer people. And I think it's interesting. But then I hear about like how things. I think it depends on where you are, and I think there also people are slowly getting a hang of it. Like I have a family friend who had a, a kid a couple um, uh, years ago, and I babysat this kid for ages who has like ever since uh they were like born has been questioning their gender identity and the mom has just handled it amazingly and uh they're already going through the process to get gender blockers oh, wow. and they even want to change their name and uh because they look up to me as like a role model one of the name ideas they want to change it to is ash which is just really adorable uh to hear and it's just so nice to hear that like Things are slowly changing, and I think that, like, the goal that we need is that people need to basically get out of their comfort zone, and they need to learn that <coughs> what they used to be told is right is wrong now. That's just the way society's moving. Yeah, no, I agree. Well, well, I sure hope that we haven't, um, I don't know, prodded too much into your personal life, All but good. like I said, I know from a viewer standpoint, because I watch your channel religiously, that <laughs> I wanted to know more about who Ash really is and I wanted to know about your experiences and you know see what's like underneath the surface uh -huh. and so I really appreciate you coming on and um and sharing that with everybody and uh, I don't know do you want to take like a few minutes to uh here at the end to go ahead and tell everybody a little bit about your channel and uh, what you're all about yeah um uh, my channel is very much not um, my transition and just my life. That isn't the vibe I really wanted because there are a lot of, like, especially trans men who, like, have those conversations, and I wanted to try something new. So my channel is a very weird look at gender with uh, a lot of funny and strange videos. Uh, I try to do things that people haven't done before because I think there's so much, so many videos about things on YouTube with gender, and I think we need to look at some of the things that aren't talked about enough. I talk a lot about gender expression and just life in general, and I I like to take a fun spin on things um, and have a lot of rambles. It's usually a pretty fun time there, and we have uh, a nice community and a lot of great people, and it's, it's pretty fun. So if you want to see that kind of thing, regardless of where you are, on the gender spectrum, we talk about all gender identities, and we accept all gender identities. We also talk about sexuality, whether you're ace or you're gay or whatever you identify as. It's just kind of a cool little bubble to be in. Awesome. Well, like I said, um, you know, I, I'm a huge fan of your channel and of your work, and you've inspired me so much to make you know, better videos, better content, things like that to up my quality and all those sorts of things. But but it's your story. I find your story very intriguing and because it's opposite of mine. Um, you know, so you guys, if you enjoy my stuff and you watch my videos um, and you haven't already checked out Ash's channel, um, you know, you need to head over there. I'll put a link um, in the description below and also you can click on, you know, some of the, like the little icons that are probably popping up around my face here pretty soon um, to go over there and check out his channel and his content. It is amazing. And I uh, hope you will all, um, you know, take the time and subscribe so that you can um, kind of see what things are like on the other side of the spectrum and see what life is like for um, someone else in the opposite shoes. So, all right, Ash, well, I think we will go ahead and uh, cut it off here. Thank you again so much for, uh, for being on, and I really appreciate it. Hopefully, we'll do another collab again in the near future. Looking forward to it. All right, thanks. So, all right, guys, well, that's all I have for you, and until next time, be kind and make good choices.